Aftermarket Summit, Tuesday, October 15th. Yeah. Uh, what, why, and when? Well, um, when, but why? I think a lot of it was, you know, post-COVID we met, and a lot of it was just a reintroduction of what we had done to improve benefits for members. Um, there was a lot of data presented. There was a lot of information presented. I don't know that there was really that much actionable stuff, and I don't know how much of it was that topical other than giving you the data you need to make some informed decisions. But I think I felt like it was a time to really reintroduce the MIC to the aftermarket and talk about what we were doing to improve their ability to pull data and manipulate that data, not just get a PDF with a report on it, and also showing how we'd work with other companies to improve the information we were getting to give more intimate details. And so part of this meeting will be Again, some presentation of some great things we've done now where you're able to click on regions and get information by region now. We've you know, got more finite with the information. Uh, we got a brand new helmet report we're gonna unveil that uh, is in conjunction with Lightspeed that we've been working on. I'm excited about. Gives you a nice 10,000 foot view of average cost, different regions, what average cost is, a three year span of what's happened to the average cost of a helmet as far as at the retail level. Um, just good enough information to, to really Re, uh, reinforce a lot of what we are thinking, but do it with data, right? In the aftermarket, if you've been doing it long enough, you have a pretty good feel for the market, but having that data to back it up gives you a much better snapshot of what's going on. And then Lightspeed working on a tire report that's going to be interesting because it's what's going across the counter, not just an overall count of tires coming in country and being sold out to distributors. MIC data comes from reporting member companies. Lightspeed comes from actual transactions over the counter. I mean, yes, they're both two ways to get in there, but what this data is gonna present is actual real world Yeah, numbers. what's happening at the retail level with products right now, and I think that's really important because, you know, gone are the days where an annual report matters. It's, yeah. it's quarter by quarter, month by month. It changes quickly anymore, and so the more we can get um, our reports to be timely, and more intimate, the better I think members will feel about the information we're receiving, that it's, it's important, it allows them to make a business informed decision on what they're gonna bring in or what they're gonna slow down on. All those things are gonna matter in the business world and the better we make the information, the more accessible, the more usable, uh, the better the benefit is for the members, so. And that's the thing where we've uh, been our own uh, worst enemies or best kept secret within the industry. The MIC does provide that. There are member benefits. Yeah. Um, we just don't always clearly communicate them to potential members. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, I, I take a little bit of a hit on that. I've been the chairman the last uh, four years, and I think a lot of my focus coming in was really improve the amount of data and the, and the quality of data we are providing to members and really try to improve the value proposition of being a member, give you a real reason for it. And I think we've done a lot of that. What I probably slowed down on was really yelling up from the mountaintops, hey, you really need to check us out. We've got some great stuff now. And so I've changed my focus a little bit. I think the aftermarket board members too are realizing that we really need to dive into the aftermarket and talk more about what we have and how good it's become. Um, and then the big difference in this summit too, Robin, I think is going to be um, we're kind of presenting it as uh, some resources to the aftermarket, which we haven't done necessarily in the past. I mean, we've done it with some data providers, but we're bringing in a guy who offers uh, B2B, B2C um, financing and also manufacturing financing to help you stretch your, your financial dollars better, um, to help you bring in stuff on a more fluid basis instead of, you know, bring one in, sell it, buy another one, bring it in, sell it. So you can smooth out that operation and create a much better uh, ramp for success with your brand or the products you're selling. We have a guy who has worked traditionally quite a bit on dealer websites, but really seeing the need for B2B to talk about what we can do in our business to build better data, more presentable data, to pre-format it, um, to put in the right tags to give it to a dealer in a way that is instantly usable and probably for our brand will drive that part of their website better than other parts of the website for our brand. Um, we've got a guy coming in who has done traditionally a lot of remote QC saving companies thousands of dollars by not having to fly somebody overseas to a factory three, four, five times a year and they have this checks and balance, it's all done digitally, and now they're gonna present an arm that also offers PFAS compliance, which is the biggest threat sitting on the horizon for all of us right now. Well, we've talked to Scott Schlegel about that, our government relations guy, and also our interim president and CEO for the MIC. 
it is an existential threat to us. It's bigger than asbestos. It's worse than a lead ban rolled into one. Yeah. Yeah, without question. So I think, you know, maybe some of this meeting is a bit of scared straight, but I think we don't need to be sitting around waiting for one big company to get picked off and then they come for all of us. We need to be planning for how we're going to manage the PFAS concern for each of our companies and the most affordable way to manage those things so that we're compliant and we can avoid any, any real pitfalls that can come from that because it's everything from packaging to the products. And to get that, got to come to the... Come to the MIC summit. summit. Yeah, come to the aftermarket summit, and we'll have that and more. Um, I think we've got some really good quality companies to at least hopefully make people think out of the box, give them some really good talking points to take back to their company and discuss, um, open up their minds to things that are happening in the market and adjacent uh, markets for other companies and other other industries, say RVs, say automotive, etc. The stuff that matters, bring it into our industry to help us get better and stronger and smarter.